welcome to this week's Conovations. I'm your host, Phil McKinney. Welcome back. We are here in the studio. Uh, been providing you a few updates on what's been going on here at the show most recently. Uh, we've got uh, some interesting guests all lined up in the queue, so you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, we also are uh, recently announced the launch of the Innovators Community. So go check that out over at theinnovators.community. You can find out more about it, get you an opportunity to kind of plug in with all the innovators that are listeners and followers of the show and of the podcast. As you know, we're in season 13 now and around doing this for, uh, for a little bit of time. So uh, hop on over there, get a chance to uh, be part of the community and uh, share your own expertise, but also find people that you can, uh, you can plug into. So with today's guest, so this is kind of going back to my hometown. I grew up in Chicago, as many of you know. My original major uh, was architecture. Got smart, switched to engineering, computer science. Uh, but uh, grew up in Chicago and uh, have uh, always, uh, you know, been a hometown boy. Yes, I am a White Sox fan. Some of you have met me out in public know that I always have my White Sox uh, hat on. Don't have it on here in the studio today. But today we have a special guest from Chicago. Uh, from an organization that I hope many of you have heard, at, heard about. If not, you're going to hear about it today. And this is an organization and what they do to not only entertain, but also help unlock that personal creativity that we all have. So let me bring in Kelly Leonard. Kelly is the executive director of uh, at Second City. Now, for those of you who don't know what Second City is, um, I think of Second City, and, and Kelly's going to correct me with everything that's been going on with Second City here most recently, is really the improv group that we have seen many of the most famous entertainers out there come through, um, including, you know, John Belushi and others. Um, and it really is an amazing experience to go to a Second City event and a live performance and watch what's going on. So, Kelly... Thanks for taking the time out of your calendar to join us here on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. So let's give a little bit of context. I'm not sure all the listeners, particularly given that we have a, a fairly large international audience, about what is Second City? So the Second City opens, opened its doors in 1959. And we were not only the first, what, like, off-loop theater, so we're like what off-Broadway is in New York, but we created this new art form which used improvisation, uh, to create sketch comedy. Uh, and we were immediately successful. So some of those early casts include people like Mike Nichols, Elaine May, Alan Arkin, Joan Rivers, Robert Klein, Fred Willard. So it really started like huge. And then <laughs> that kept going. So other alums like Bill Murray, and you mentioned John Belushi, and Gilda Radner, and John Candy. And then most recently, people like Tina Fey, Stephen Colbert, uh, Steve Carell, Keegan-Michael Key. So we're most known for being a home for improv-based sketch comedy and producing huge stars for decade after decade. But two other things have been going on that whole time. One, we've had a school. We, we teach people uh, improvisation and not just to get them on Saturday Night Live. A lot of people use these skills at home and in their jobs. Uh, and then we also have a corporate division called Second City Works. And this is probably our biggest division. And we get brought into we do about 400 engagements a year. Um, this year we're trending more like 450 engagements uh, with Fortune 1000 companies uh, to unlock creativity and innovation inside teams, to use comedy as a communication skill. There's a whole suite of skills that improvisation teaches someone that is becoming increasingly relevant, uh, which is surprising given the fact we're an almost 60 year old institution. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, in fact, in fact I went back, there was a, a blog post that I wrote, oh, it's got to be five years old, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. talking about the role of improv in unlocking your own personal creativity. So is that what Second City Works does, is trying to help people kind of find that, that uh, I don't know what you want to call it, that internal spark, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we, we work with individuals and teams, you know, across a variety of platforms. But, you know, the, the thing is, this is all just human being stuff. Uh, it is, I, we put up these, you know, sort of uh, constructs like, like business and uh, wellness and personal life, and all of it is just human beings working with other human beings. And what the founders of Second City uh, discovered quite keenly uh, is that 
human beings are not naturally good at working with other human beings. So well before, you know, behavioral economics showed us that people behave irrationally, these guys kind of knew it. Um, and so improv skills are all about getting people to focus and listen, uh, giving people kind of like uh, human being nudges uh, that allow them to be more collaborative, more creative, more aware of what's going on in a room. And this is stuff that we've honed not just on stage or in the classroom, but because we've been working with corporate audiences for decades now, we've really fine-tuned the application uh, as it can be used in business. <laughs> and so in this case, one of the skills I see in improv that is very much lacking in the business world is what some refer to as active listening yeah. versus the passive listening. You're thinking about your answer with, without really thinking about or listening to what the actual other person is actually saying. Does that play into it then? Oh, completely. So we wildly overestimate our ability to perceive what's going on in a room. We think we're catching everything. Um, and what, what we know, and science has shows us this over and over and over again, um, that people need practice in listening and in focus. And if they don't have that, they're missing a lot. Uh, so I'll give you an example. One, one of the exercises that we bring into a business is we'll get uh, two people paired up to have a conversation. And there's a rule. Uh, and the rule is uh, that each person needs to start their sentence as part of their conversation with the last word the other person said. And what this does is really force people to listen to the end of sentences. And you discover a couple things right away. You discover that it's hard. Uh, you discover that people uh, are not used to this and it's uncomfortable. Um, that they have to maybe take a moment to think before they respond. And then as we unpack the exercise when the first time they, we do it, we say, yeah, well, this is the problem is you're usually stopping to listen about halfway through in order to think of the thing that you want to say. And when we're improvising on a stage, making something of this, you can't afford to listen to the end of someone. There might be crucial information coming at you. It is no different in life, and it is no different in business. And this exercise really brings that to home for our participants. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it is one of those things, right? Because, you know, we all, we all think we're good listeners, right? But in yeah. reality, when you all of a sudden are realizing that you've daydreamed off on something and really not have even caught what the person said, um, we kind of get reminded right. of it yeah. all the time. It, it's really, it, it's a lot harder than people think. It is, and it's even worse now because of our addiction to digital devices. I mean, you know, now that we've got these phones, that are like hip flasks in our pocket. Uh, I was talking to Adam Alter, who's a psych professor at NYU. He just wrote this great book called Irresistible. Uh, and his research shows that simply having a phone on a desk, even if it's upside down, not facing up, uh, limits our ability to communicate. Um, and he also, he, he, it's a great exercise. He goes, all right, uh, right now, if your feet are on the ground, can you reach your phone? So I ask everyone who's listening to this, do that. Are your feet on the ground? Can you reach your phone? I will bet you 95% of the people uh, listening to this right now can reach their phone. That's not healthy. <laughs> so, you know, part of the problem is I think is also a little of this digital addiction problem, right? Of, uh, you know, we, we, we get that in. Yeah and hit every time we get a Facebook like or an inbound email or something. Yeah. And we get to this interrupt, interruption driven kind of society. But there's also yeah. this and the, out there around this whole the of, of interruptions impacting that creativity side of it. Mm -hmm. So, hey, we're going to take... Absolutely. So the neuroscience is very clear on this. Uh, instant messaging. Yep. And, yeah, well, instant messaging is a perfect example, right, of the... Uh, uh, you know, that, that need to um, feel like you got to respond. If someone sends you a message, you feel like, well, they're, expect they're, st they're sitting there. It's like having a two-way conversation on the phone, right? Right. It, it's incredibly limiting uh, to actual productive communication. So, you know, one of the things about improvisation is it forces you to get away from your phone and forces you to interact with other human beings. And one of the reasons that people come out, you know, so uh, positive after an improvised experience is because actually that, that point of actual communication, having someone actually listen to you, releases a really great uh, uh, feeling in the brain uh, and allows you to collaborate more successfully down the line. 
So we're going we're gonna to continue this conversation with, with Kelly Leonard. We're going to take this quick, short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to pick up our conversation around Kelly, his work at Second City, improvisation, and the role and impact that it can have on your creativity and innovation. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back after this quick commercial break. You're listening to Kill Innovations on the BizTalk Radio Network, and you can get all the show notes over at killerinnovations.com. Mm-hmm. 